strategic alliances. We went with a Shunammite woman, and I'm going to teach you tonight. Is that good? Let's talk about Mary and Elizabeth tonight. Uh, we've done Jonathan and David, and I was going to go back to the Shunammite woman, but I think I'm going to go with Mary and Elizabeth tonight and some of those confident connections. And on Sunday, we'll wrap up relationships, and, and we're going to finalize it. But it's been really helpful to break and discern what is a godly and an ungodly soul tie, the importance of partnership and, and the power of that. So let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through about 38. You want to be seated or you want to stand? I'm teaching tonight, so y'all stand. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know my custom. It's just, it's hard for me to break some things. The word of God's so holy to me. Uh, Luke chapter 1. I know we wear jeans now in church, but I still stand for the word. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And let's look verse through uh, about 38 here. And there's so much because Mary, as we know, is the most unlikely candidate. And she will usher in, in my opinion, the greatest move of God. She'll bring forth uh, the Son of, of, of God, and she'll be used mightily. And she comes from very simplistic background. But the plan of God would have been aborted had she not gone to the right person, had she not made the right hookup. Because as you're going to see tonight, that even her parents and family, people would have misunderstood. Now, let's make it real. We're going to bring it down to where we live today. Y'all know if you went to your mama, if you went to your husband or your, your fiance, or if you went to your pastor even, or you went to Pastor Michael and you said, the Holy Ghost overshadowed me and I am pregnant. That was a girl. That's a good one. I mean, let's bring it down. This, this is, this is, I mean, I mean, God didn't tell anyone else, I'm going to do this thing in her. I mean, it wasn't thunderous. It wasn't. In fact, it could have taken her life. She should have been stoned. I mean, she should have been put to death. And she's going to be used by God. And the whole plan of God would have been aborted if she did not go to the right person. Because her connection with Elizabeth was able to cover what other people would have misunderstood. There are some things that God puts in your heart that if you reveal them too soon, you'll kill the plan of God. You have to know, who do I connect my dream to? Who do I connect what I'm caring to? Because if I connect with the wrong person, they might not understand the workings of Christ in my life right now. And it will abort and kill what God wants to bring forth and carry. So, so it's beyond just you having the right hookup. This is about a bigger picture of you bringing forth the plan of God. Look at somebody say, right people are about to come into my life. Luke chapter 1, verse 26, because we know it takes one person to bless you and one person to mess you up. Luke chapter 1, verse 26, let me hear you. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Now, let's camp out there because I promise you're going to get out by 830 tonight. She was troubled. Has God ever given you something so big that it was hard to digest? I mean, it was like, because the promise is always going to be bigger than the person. That's one of the ways you know this is God, because it's bigger than you. What God begins to speak to you, and trouble doesn't mean like I'm upset. It just means that it's hard to digest, because where did she start having the battle right away? In her mind. She's trying to wrap her mind around, how is this thing going to come to pass? It's not that her heart's not right with God. Because God's speaking to her and she's like, hey, I'm in. Bring, do whatever you want to do. I prayed, God, if you can use anyone, use me. I, sign me up. I believe for nations to be shaken. But immediately, immediately, and this is where always the battlefield will be. And that's why you've got to stay so connected to the spirit of God. Because immediately she starts thinking in her mind. 
Now, how's all this going to happen? And that's where you can forfeit your faith. That's where doubt and unbelief and fear and all the other weaponry of the enemy comes in. Because your mind tries to figure out God. And God is not analytical. God doesn't make sense. In fact, if it usually makes sense, you can pretty much mark it's not God. He's illogical. He doesn't, things don't, two and two don't add up to four in the economy of God. So she says, what manner of salutation? And when she saw him, she was troubled at saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, fear not. So immediately, what's the angel do? Stops the fear. So there's so much teaching here. Immediately, the angel says, "Uh uh-uh, I'm rebuking fear. So you have to do, follow the pattern that when God begins to speak to you, what's the first thing that you're going to wrestle with in your mind? Okay. When things start shifting and happening around here, where's the first thing you're going to wrestle in your mind? Because a stronghold is a mindset that's resistant to change. So the first thing you've got to do to your mind is say, fear not, fear not, fear not. You've got to go with the peace of God. You've got to be able to fill it in your spirit. So so you've got to speak to your mind. Good teaching, Pastor Paula. And the angel said, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found what? Favor with God. Now, I believe that you are favored by God. God has favored you. That's why you're planted it without walls. And behold, thou shalt conceive. When you have favor, you become a birther. When you have favor, you start producing things. So one of the offsprings of favor is conception. When you have the favor of God, you start getting pregnant. See, I see men that are pregnant in this place. I, I know that you'd rather me hoop and holler right now, so I'll do it the way you want it. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that once you find favor with God, you will get pregnant. Ha! But I'm teaching you. So she conceives in her womb and she brings forth a son and they shall call his name Jesus. Verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give him to him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. Now notice how God gives her the big picture, but doesn't tell her all the details. Doesn't tell her because revelation is progressive. God will tell you the end from the beginning. Okay, you're going to bring forth Jesus. He's going to get the throne of David. He's going to rule. He's going to be the son of God. But he he doesn't tell her all the intricacies of the details of destiny. Because if God laid it all out to you at once, it would so overwhelm you, you, you couldn't handle it. So he gives you enough just so you sign up and say yes. You go, okay, I'm in. So. I'm trying to help someone turn the switch off in their mind and stay in the realm of the spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit, and I'm speaking prophetically, wants you dependent on him. He wants you dependent because your biggest battle is not the devil. Where's your battle, guys? Okay, so let's keep going. You will reign over. Then said Mary unto the angels. So it's just, okay, this is what you're going to do. You're going to shake nations. You're going to bring forth Jesus. You're going to see... You're going to see the world change. And how many of you know God's given you a promise? Okay. And God's given us a promise. Then said Mary to the angel, how shall this be seeing I know not a man? Now, I don't personally believe a lot of preachers really get on her right here. Like, oh, she didn't have faith. I don't believe that, Pastor Michael. I think she was asking for the strategy. She was saying, okay, show me how to do this because I'm not going to violate a principle. Because sometimes when God begins to rebuild destiny, we get in the way. He'll tell you the big picture and then we try to go make it happen. So if destiny is, I'm going to bring forth a child, the only way I know to do that is go get with a man. But if I go get with a man, (laughs) I'm violating a principle. Well... (laughs) In this situation, maybe. Okay? So, so she's saying, how, how's this going to be? Because the only way I know to do this thing is to go be with Joseph, to go consummate, to go get pregnant, and to bring forth a son. And so she's asking him, strategy, show me how to do this. And the angel said, now the angel gives the strategy, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. So here's how this is going to happen. 
I believe very much that we have vision and strategy, but here's the bottom line. The only way we're going to shake this city, the only way that your dream is going to come to pass is you've got to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's going to come all the marketing, all the network, we'll do everything. We're going to hit it hard in 2012. But everything we do is going to be secondary to the overshadowing the Holy Spirit. What's going to pull people in is God's presence. God's presence. God with you. Emmanuel. And so the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow and come upon thee. And the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also this holy thing which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Now, I can take time and teach right there because you carry a holy thing and it has a name in it. For her, it was Jesus. But your purpose that you carry in the womb of the Spirit is a holy thing. And it's called something. It might be called without walls. For you, it might be called uh, kingdom couples. Whatever it is that you carry, you carry something in your spiritual womb that's holy by God. Verse 36, and behold, now watch the very first thing he says to her. He's about to say, okay, here's the plan. Here's the strategy. Now he's about to show her, here's your partnership. Because if you hook up with the wrong person, you will kill the plan of God. You'll kill it. And behold, watch. He says, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. She's called barren. So sometimes people will tell you what you are when you're not that. They called her impotent. They called her ineffective. Verse 37, say it real loud. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now I need you to get an attitude with the person next to you and just square your shoulders back and say, excuse me, I don't think you read that scripture right. Because it says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now call the person's name out, just like you, you, you getting an out, square your shoulders back. Come on, do what you need to do. And just say, Carol, call their name out. Call their name out. Rosita, call them out. Say, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Look at somebody behind you that doesn't have it yet and just say, look, look at them, look at them and call them out. I mean, if you have to grab them, if they won't hit you, I mean, just shake them a little bit. Say, God wants to speak to you. Say, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. You need to tell that to somebody until they get it in their spirit. Because the enemy's telling you it won't happen. Circumstances saying it's impossible. Situations are saying it can't be. But you look at somebody, because I'm telling you by the spirit of God, we're, we're getting ready. You said the ceiling has been shattered. I feel it by the spirit. There's an elevation coming. There's promotion that is here. God's going to pull people and lift people up. Watch what God's going to do. He's about to maneuver people in positions. You're about to see elevation. You're about to see promotion. Even within this ministry, there are things that are going to happen within this city, within your life. There are things that God's raising up. For with God... Nothing shall be impossible. Look at somebody say, nothing shall be impossible.